30 Things to Do in Johor Bahru, Malaysia. With a metro area population of more than 1.5 million, the buzzing metropolis of Johor Bahru lies just across the Straits of Johor from Singapore. Although typically known as a hub for cheap shopping, with its rich and complex cultural legacy, its past marked by colonialism, and its streets lined with beautiful historic architecture, Johor Bahru is a city with much more to offer. Add to that a culture grounded in Malay customs, but enriched by immigrants from across China, Singapore, and India, and you find an amazing variety of food, things to see and do, and a friendly, welcoming attitude. Here are 30 things to see and do in Johor Bahru. If you cross over from Singapore, you will arrive at the busy JB Central in the downtown core. Just a short taxi ride from JB Central is the Glass Temple. The first glass Hindu temple in the world and the only one in Malaysia, this stunning temple is covered inside and out with thousands of pieces of cut glass. Upon approaching, the temple can be seen shining in the sun. The exterior of the temple is adorned with figures of gods and goddesses and characters from Hindu stories. 300,000 pieces of mirrored and colored glass cover the walls, columns, doors, ceilings, and altars in ornate designs and mosaics. Inside, multiple altars feature various Hindu gods and goddesses. The temple is unique in also featuring a statue of the Buddha, a statue of Mother Teresa, and a statue of Jesus Christ. The creator of the temple included them as a symbol of welcome to people of other faiths, and indeed the staff is welcoming of visitors. The temple is easiest to reach by taxi or private car. It is open to visitors from noon to around 8 p.m., but even if it looks deserted, walk down and there is often a curator present who will allow you inside. You will need to remove your shoes and pay a small entrance fee, as well as paying extra if you wish to take photos. Closer to downtown, you can visit the Sultan Abu Bakr State Mosque. Built between 1892 and 1900, it's a mix of Victorian, Moorish, and Malay architectural styles. The Grand Mosque can accommodate as many as 2,000 worshippers. During non-prayer times, non-Muslims are allowed to enter the mosque. However, visitors must remove their shoes and wear modest clothing that covers the body. Women must wear a scarf over their hair. Nearby, the Johor Zoo is almost 10 acres. It's a fairly small zoo, but visitors can view about 100 species of animals such as big cats, camels, gorillas, orangutans, and tropical birds. The Grand Palace was built in 1866 and is still used by the Sultan of Johor for state functions. The palace and grounds are open to the public on Thursdays through Sundays, but may close unexpectedly for events. The main tourism area is located in and around the border checkpoint at JB Central, and there's a lot to see. The beautiful Sultan Ibrahim building was built in the 1930s. In 1942, during the Japanese occupation of the Malay Peninsula, the Japanese army used the building as a headquarters, and the tower is an observation point to look across the Straits of Johor and plan the invasion of Singapore. There are plans to turn the building into a museum. Just a short walk from here are several places of worship. The India Mosque serves the large community of Indian Muslims in the area. Its distinctive onion dome and minaret are covered in glass and mirrors. Nearby, the Gurdwara Sahib Sikh Temple serves the local Sikh community, which has been a fixture here since the colonial era. Just down the street, the Sri Raja Maryaman Hindu Temple can be found. This open-air temple is free to enter and open to the public. The temple is adorned with many images of gods and goddesses and characters from Hindu sagas. Colorful and ornate, there are several altars within and it is an active place of worship for the local community. The temple is named for the Tamil goddess Mariamman. She is the main Tamil mother goddess, worshipped predominantly in rural areas of the South Indian state Tamil Nadu. Pay attention to the details as every space is covered with beautiful and ornate art. Before entering, you should remove your shoes and leave them near the door. If you are wearing shorts or a skirt, you may be asked to cover up using a scarf before entering the temple. Besides the Indian community, there is a large Chinese population. The old Chinese temple sits in the heart of Johor Bahru, surrounded by modern buildings and skyscrapers. Though the actual founding of the temple is shrouded in mystery, scholars believe the temple was built in the mid-1800s by a group of Chinese community leaders headed by a river lord and a prominent plantation owner. A large number of Chinese people immigrated to Malaysia between the 1800s and 1900s. 
they left unmistakable signs of their cultural heritage throughout the city. Though small, the wooden temple holds five statues of gods, each popular with a different Chinese ethnic group. Since historically, Johor Bahru was home to immigrants from across China, the temple made them all welcome by including their local deities. The statues present are popular with Hainese, Cantonese, Hakka, Hokkien, and Tachu people. The temple was also a center of community life for Chinese immigrants. Today, their descendants make up the second largest ethnic group in Malaysia after the ethnic Malay majority. The temple is still a popular place for the local Chinese community, and visitors can see worshippers praying and offering incense. Be sure to dress respectfully and remove your shoes before entering. The temple is free to enter and welcoming to visitors. The Johor Bahru Chinese Heritage Museum showcases the history of Chinese migration and life within Johor, with displays of artifacts, documents, and historical photos. Visitors can learn more at the Kuang Su Heritage Gallery. Established in 1878 as a clan house, today the gallery features historical artifacts, such as jewelry, opium pipes, opera costumes, art, and more. Walking the narrow streets near these two museums is a highlight of the visit to Johor. The tiny lanes are lined with historic shop houses, and visitors can imagine what the city must have looked like during the colonial era. The area is a mix of buildings that have been beautifully renovated and those that are a little bit run down but still have beautiful architectural details. Today, the shop houses are home to a variety of very reasonably priced stores and restaurants. The majority of the restaurants serve Malay, Chinese, or Indian food, but other cuisines are also available. The restaurants are reasonably priced, but you will pay a little more than you would at a street stand. During the heat of the day, you can sit in the shade of one of the sidewalk cafes and sip coffee or tea. If you prefer, you can sip coconut water straight out of the coconut. You can even sample a glass of sugarcane juice, freshly ground right there on the street. To really soak in the flavors of Johor Bahru, the tiny alleyways near the railway station are a must-see, especially for foodies. Tucked in between modern and historic buildings, many of the owners of the food stands cook their items right there on the street, and you will find an abundance of fried foods. Johor is famous for its seafood, and there is a wide variety to choose from. A mix of stalls serve noodle dishes, seafood, dumplings, soups, and more. For a delicious treat, stop by one of the stands where you can buy fresh paratha either stuffed or plain served with a rich sauce. At night, the alleys become even more active. Locals roll in their food carts and people pack the streets to grab a cheap bite to eat. If you prefer, you can also head to one of the numerous malls in the area to eat. The malls have a variety of more upscale restaurants that will cost more than the street front restaurants and street carts. However, you will find a bigger variety of international cuisines from local desserts or western style pastries to coffee shops, or specialty foods like dim sum. Perhaps the best part is you can take a break from the heat of the day and relax in the air conditioning. As a shopping hub, Johor is known for its numerous shopping malls. Tourists can shop for name brand clothing, accessories, jewelry, fine furniture, rugs, and more. The malls in Johor tend to have lower prices than the malls in Singapore, known for its luxury shopping. If you're looking for a bargain, you're better off shopping out on the street. You can check the many small shops or street vendors. With clothing, toys, decor, electronics, and more for sale, there's something for everyone. Most of the sands sell new products, but buyers can also find secondhand stalls and antiques. Sellers are used to haggling over prices, so don't be afraid to bargain. Or wait until after dark and head to the sprawling night market. Around dusk, sellers appear and begin setting up tables and awnings to sell their goods. The streets are closed off to cars, and visitors can wander the bazaar and soak in the rich sights, smells, and tastes of Johor. For local cultural items, visit the Mawar Handicraft Center that sells batik clothes and other items, or visit the Johor Area Rehabilitation Organization Handicraft Center. Products in the center are made by local people with disabilities. After dark, the weather cools down and the city lights up. A short walk from the night market, you can visit the Sultan Abu Bakr Monument, where locals like to sit and relax and soak in the lights of the park and nearby government buildings. After walking all day, you may be ready to kick back and relax. There are many businesses offering reflexology, Thai and Javanese style massage for very reasonable prices, 
or you could try some healing Chinese medicine tea. You can also observe other local crafts such as the making of flower garlands, batik painting, or try traditional henna. The Malay Cultural Village teaches about Malaysian culture through activities like batik painting, soap making, and traditional dance. Be sure to check opening hours and show schedules prior to visiting. Some places outside the downtown area to visit include Donga Bay, a 25-kilometer recreational area on the waterfront, and Putri Harbor. Families traveling with children may enjoy amusement parks such as Hello Kitty Town, Thomas Town, or Legoland. These are located outside the city. You can take a private bus or taxi to get there. The official language of Malaysia is Malay. However, in Johor Bahru, most people speak basic English. Most tourist locations are open during business hours, but closed on Mondays. Some outdoor activities, such as markets, do not begin until after dark. Taxis are numerous and cheap to use. However, be sure the cab driver turns on the meter when you leave, or you can arrange a set price before departing. As with traveling anywhere, be sure to be aware of your surroundings and keep valuables and cash hidden. Don't leave your belongings unattended. There are several ways to get to Johor Bahru from Singapore. One way is to take the Causeway Link bus from the Kranji MRT station on the red north-south line. At Kranji, exit the station and look for the bus stop for the 170 or 950 bus. There's typically a line, so you can't miss it. The buses accept cash or the EasyLink card, the same card used on the MRT. The buses run every 10 to 15 minutes. Depending on when you go, you may have to queue for some time. If you pay cash, hold on to your bus ticket as you will need it after the checkpoint. You will go to Singapore Immigration Checkpoint where you will disembark, bringing all your belongings with you. After immigration, board the 170 or 950 bus again. The bus will take you across the causeway where you will go through Malaysian immigration. A faster, more comfortable option is the shuttle train where you are guaranteed a seat. To take the train, go to the Marsling MRT station on the red north-south line. Exit the station and cross the street to the bus stop directly across. Take bus 856 and exit at the Woodlands train checkpoint. You can buy tickets there, but it's better to buy them online in advance in case the train sells out. Arrive early to allow time for Singapore immigration. Trains run every 30 minutes to 2 hours depending on time of day, and the crossing takes only 5 minutes. You will go through Malaysian immigration in Johor Bahru after disembarking. You can also take a private car or private taxi and you can stay in the car to pass through the immigration checkpoints. This may be easier for those traveling with young children, the elderly, or people with limited mobility, or if you have a lot of luggage. The disadvantage is that this can be quite expensive. Be aware that the border crossing can take a few hours if you go during a high volume time. Busy times include rush hour, Friday nights, weekends, and public holidays. If possible, cross the border on a weekday outside of rush hour or during off-peak hours on the weekend. Have you been to Johor Bahru? Did we miss something? Tell us in the comments. If you enjoyed this video of 30 of the best tourist sites in Johor Bahru, please click like and remember to subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.